ho! Hello, and welcome to KringleCon. I am so excited to get involved in the CTF this year. And on my way to the North Pole, Santa gave me a call and he was like, Cheerio, I want you to provide some tips and tricks for getting into threat hunting for the abominable snowman. And I said, why not? So let's get started. Really quick though, a note from the lawyers that the opinions expressed in this presentation are mine alone and do not necessarily reflect those of my employer and I'm here in my individual capacity. And for funsies, I made a GitHub. It's under my name, Cheerio CringleCon 2021. So the abominable snowman, let's call him Al for short. He has a little bit of a background in CTI, but for the purposes of this talk, you don't have to have, you don't have to come from a CTI role. You can jump right into threat hunting, um, just need to practice and work through some of the suggestions that I gave him for getting into a threat hunting role. So we're gonna talk about research, practice, talking with the professional, and then finally applying these skills. So with research, the whole goal is to ask better questions. The number one place I usually go to first is SANS. SANS has a reading room with a ton of articles. SANS also has the Threat Hunting Summit, and I included some links in the GitHub for various uh, YouTube playlists that they have. Another great resource of theirs is the Find Evil poster. So just sans all the things. Sans your life if you can. And the next suggestion I gave to Al are uh, workshops and talks. So Al generally tries to attend industry events and what, whatever's available for him. And I said, hey, I was like, why don't you prioritize threat hunting type talks and workshops uh, before you go and attend either the conferences or, or whatever's being offered in the community. So Al said he would do that. And YouTube is another really great resource for threat hunting videos. So the next thing I suggested to Al was to look at hunting tip of the day on Twitter and to follow all the threat hunting accounts that he possibly can. For instance, LinkedIn has a threat hunting account. Uh, Facebook has a threat hunting group. Uh, wherever it is that you feel comfortable within the social media, reach out to the people, engage with them, ask them, ask them questions, learn from these industry professionals that share openly on social media. And then the next one, I said, hey, Al, look at all of these amazing discords and slacks and they have threat hunting channels with threat hunting professionals that sometimes post in there or have conversations i said why don't you join those and ask questions and learn from these amazing people so here are some twitter accounts that i suggest following there also uh there there's also a link in the github with with all of this already pre-prepared if you don't want to go to the github just screenshot this these people are amazing you will learn a ton also to reading i said al you're gonna want to read you're gonna want to look at red teaming blogs you're gonna want to look at threat hunting reports that are released Threat Hunter Playbook's amazing. The DFA Report, if you're not a patron, definitely send them some money. They do an amazing job. Uh, Practical Threat Intelligence and Data-Driven Threat Hunting by Valentina Pallison is an amazing book. And I said, Al, pick it up, read it. Even if you read a, a couple sections a day, a night, a week, it'll help get you into the threat hunting mindset and framework. And Take a look at attack. Look at the various attack techniques and and uh, and the procedures, and think about how you would possibly hunt those. Look at current detections available, such as the Sigma rules. They are amazing. They do such a good job. Take a look at that and think, huh? 
oh, that's a really interesting way to, 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 to detect whatever that technique is that you're looking at. So, and side threat Thursday. So whenever there's like a big thing that goes on in, in the, in the world of cyber, uh, you know, a scythe usually does something related to that or ransomware and gives you ideas of how you can run a purple team operation, which also means it gives you ideas to hunt that within your environment. So you want to document all of this. And in the GitHub, I go through some of the notes that that I've personally taken and I've suggested to Al to take whenever, whenever he's attending the talks or the workshop. So now we're going to go into practice and the goal with practice is to prepare and you, I said hey uh, you know at the current organization that you're at Al you want to try to get involved with either the sock tickets or preparing reports or something for other teams within your organization the other thing is training get as much hands-on training as you can and boss of the sock is a really great way to do that they also have an attack range that you can play on your own. Um, another thing is when you're looking at and reading all the stuff you're reading, the, the red team reports and, and the blogs and the threat reports and the defer reports and all of that, think about how you would hunt it. And then finally, another great way to document what it is that you're learning and how you're progressing is to give a talk about what it is that you're doing or something that's hunt related or adjacent and I'll talk a little bit more through something that I did and Santa also wanted me to point out that uh, you know the the hunt de hypothesis development is really important so when you're reading all of the stuff you want to understand and think about what would this badness look like for instance you're reading a red team blog what would this look like how would I where where would I find it is step number two and then number three is what is this search going to look like and this is where the hands-on uh, practical experience is really gonna come in handy so this part of this talk is about how I applied cyber threat intelligence to a purple teaming exercise and it can also double as research that you could perform when you're doing threat hunting and just give you some high level tips and tricks and I'll walk through it and and just give you a high level. So this is a Hawkeye sample and through it a Malware Bazaar got to Joe Sandbox and Joe Sandbox provides TTPs. So you can deep dive into it a little bit and perform a little research. And if you look at Stack Overflow and Atomic Red Team, it, they provide some wonderful resources that you can either use for hunting or purple team exercises. And as you're going through this, you also wanna think about behaviors and also any detections that it's keying on. So this one is a YAR rule. 2015 looks kind of important. If you're doing a structured threat hunt, which I'll explain in a couple seconds, uh, you want to kind of condense this information for the threat hunters so they know, hey, you know, if they want me to hunt for Hawkeye in the environment or derivative thereof, I can look at what's already known and then kind of pivot from there. So providing that additional research for them could be potentially helpful. Masquerading, that's a hunt all, all in and of itself. Credential access and just go through the TTPs for a malware sample. You can do this on your own as well and practice. Get practice doing this and being able to read the reports and perform the research and read the blogs and, and all the stuff that's out there. The, another thing that's great is the C2 matrix. So I suggested, hey Al, they have a slingshot VM with the C2 matrix and you can utilize that to understand um, and look at the C2 traffic as well. So that, that it'll only help you become a better threat hunter. And you wanna document your practice. So the pro, the pro time is money. So when you approach a, a seasoned threat hunter, you wanna be the best mentee you can be. And you wanna give them a time frame of, let's say Al wants to be, wants to start interviewing for a threat hunting role in approximately six months. Well. The experienced threat hunter will help you narrow it down and guide your focus and your learning. Let's say as a year, that's more time to devote to learning what you need to learn in order to get into a threat hunting role. 
biggest suggestion I can give you is to come with questions and be very specific with, uh, uh, with outcomes and goals tied to the conversation that you have with the professional. Also too, after you're done talking with them, you want to let the pro know how they impacted your life. Um, giving feedback and, I don't know, a simple thank you as well is, is also very helpful. So I, I have copious amounts of notes of different professionals that I get to speak with and I learn from and I incorporate into how I threat hunt. So finally, apply. The goal with application is to prepare you for the interview and so that once you are hired in a threat hunting role, you can provide value immediately right out of the gate. So the first thing that I suggested to Al is to look at MITRE ATT&CK and to pick a few different techniques and procedures and really understand them and be able to speak to them in detail. The next one are CISA slash public threat reports and you want to develop enough hunt hypotheses per threat hunt or per threat report or whatever it is that you're reading for approximately an hour worth of content. Um, and this is so that when you're in an interview, they ask you about this or that or whatever, you'll have an hour of content to kind of pick through and be able to highlight the, the big takeaways when, they're, when you're having the conversation or the group interview. And finally, current events. You want to stay up with current events. And you want to think about not only the technical attack chain of whatever it is that's going on, but also you want to think about how you would hunt that and be able to speak to that as well. So Santa shared uh, his threat hunting cycle and it starts with research. You want to do hypothesis generation, understanding the technical details. You go into analysis, conclusions, and then finally detections. You want to automate the hunts that you can. And why is this important? Well, when you're reading through all of it, especially when you're in an interview, you want to keep track of all the stuff that you're doing as far as the application portion is concerned. And you want to be able to speak to the managers and the other experienced threat hunters or professionals on the call with you. And you want to have a framework that you can address that with and kind of make sense of all the learning that you're doing. You also want to break it down, and this is where I talk about structured or known. Known TTPs, IOCs, and artifacts, and unstructured is unknown. So I'm gonna add another layer of what you wanna look at when you're reading the DFER report or, or any anything threat hunting related, is that you wanna think about internal versus external. How you would hunt uh, for cobalt strike beacons in your environment is different than how you would hunt for cobalt strike beacons out in the wild. So just think about that when you're reading through these different reports. Also, the pyramid of pain, no talk would be complete without David J. Bianco, the man, the myth, the legend. And so when you're looking at the pyramid of pain, you wanna focus on behaviors and tools and artifacts. And you wanna look at the host and network related information to those. Also, I suggested, hey Al, while you're doing all of this, track the time that you're spending on these three different areas of research, practice, and apply. And you can do this over time and get an idea of where you're spending more of your time at, and you can tweak as necessary. And this will help you kind of get an understanding of where your level up ing activities are. So document your application. Uh, like I said, this is important during the interviews and also when you're on the job, I promise that the notes and all the resources that you document and all the information that you have, it'll come in handy at some point in the future. So if you document it and where you find it, it'll be helpful. So some of the main takeaways, research. Main goal of that is to be able to ask better questions and to know where to find stuff. There's so much stuff out there. The faster you know how to find it, the faster you can get the answer, the faster you can hunt the badness and solve whatever problem it is that you're looking at. Next one, practice. You want to daydream hunt hypotheses. Someone talks about some sort of attack. Hmm, how would I hunt that? And then run that through the hunt uh, dev development process and then the hunt cycle 
and it helps you prepare. So that way, you know, if your CISO or your VP or your manager or whomever director comes to you and they're like, you know, we need to hunt this because it's a big deal. You'll be like, I got this. I've already been thinking about it and here's how I would do it. Finally, apply. You wanna make sure that you're practical, that you're consistent, and the end goal with this, besides being super awesome day one on the job, is to prepare for the interview. So thank you very much. I hope you all have a happy holidays. I hope the information that I shared with you uh, will help lay out some sort of framework for you to approach pivoting into a threat hunting role wherever you come from, if that's your interest. I know Al, uh, the abominable snowman, was super happy with the information and check out the GitHub. Also, this talk is in memory of a legend, Alan Pollard. Thank you very much for all that you've done for us. You have made a career in cybersecurity possible uh, because of what you've done for us. So thank you so much. Happy holidays.